let's move on. Verification number five, validation, sanitization, and encoding. And as a reminder, this is OWASP, Open Web Application Security Project, ASVS, Application Security Verification Standard 403 from October 2021. Now, control objective. The most common web application security weakness is the failure to properly validate input coming from the client or the environment before directing it without any output encoding. Now, this is really important. The first thing to keep in mind when it comes to input validation is the purpose of the input. So the purpose of the input defines the way it has to be sanitized and validated and secured for that matter. This weakness leads to almost all of the significant vulnerabilities in web applications such as XSS, SQL injection, interpreter injection, local Unicode attacks, file system attacks, and buffer overflows. Now, in short, this is what a penetration tester or a cybersecurity professional or expert should do. Ensure that a verified application satisfies the following high-level requirements. Input validation and output encoding architecture have agreed pipeline to prevent injection attacks. First and foremost, input data is strongly typed, validated, ranged or length checked, or at worst sanitized or filtered. Best to start with a whitelist scenario rather than a blacklist scenario. Whitelist scenario where you only allow certain input instead of denying and allowing everything else than denying which is a uh, blacklist scenario output data is encoded or escaped as per the context of the data as close to the interpreter as possible now with modern web application architecture output encoding is more important than ever it is difficult to provide robust input validation in certain scenarios. So the use of safer APIs, such as parameterized queries, when it comes to SQL injection, auto-escaping templating frameworks. So template injections such as the one five times five, which is for a certain JavaScript flavor or carefully chosen output encoding is critical to the security of the application. Now. As penetration testers, verification number five, input five, one input validation, what it is that we should be looking after. And we're talking about, again, L1, L2, and L3 levels of verification. Properly implemented input validation controls using positive allow lists. So allow rather than deny. Or you could say white rather than black lists, white lists rather than black lists and strong data typing can eliminate more than 90% of the in, or in, all injection attacks. Also, you have to keep in mind that a lot of uh, frameworks, if you're a developer, so for developers who build on top of frameworks and do not code everything from scratch, some of the burden or some of the heavy lifting is being done by the framework itself because the framework has taken through time all the hits in terms of security issues and you're sort of like safe to a certain extent of course you're never entirely safe but the framework has already taken care of a lot of security issues unless you're talking about a zero day or very motivated attackers a lot of those issues have been covered and for that specific matter on and on that specific line if you're building something from scratch or if you're te testing a custom built web application everything from scratch not everything but a lot of uh, a lot of it from scratch chances are very high that you will encounter input validation issues now building in secure input validation is required during application architecture design sprints coding and unit integration testing Although many of these items cannot be found in penetration tests, the results of not implementing them are usually found in V5.3, which we'll be looking in this or in the next video. Output encoding and injection prevention requirements. Developers um, and secure code reviewers 
which is a career in of itself, are recommended to treat this section as if L1 is required for all items to prevent injections. Now let's go into the verifications themselves. 511. Verify that the application has defenses against HTTP parameter pollution attacks, particularly if the application framework makes no distinction about the source of request parameters, get post cookies headers or environment variables. This is really important because in this situation, you would be able as an attacker or an attacker would be able to actually use everything in a request as an attack vector. And this is applicable to L1, L2 and L3 levels of verification. So keep that in mind. And also parameter pollution is something that your generic vulnerability scanner would be, wouldn't be able to find or to spot, which is why a cybersecurity professional or a penetration tester with a lot of experience would be able to find this stuff manually alongside mass assignment, which is another uh, interesting, it seems that we're going to be talking about it next. Alongside mass assignment, which are very impactful, very, very impactful and are not found unless you're doing a lot of manual testing. Verify that framework, so 512, verify that frameworks protect against mass parameter assignment attacks or that the application has countermeasures to protect against safe parameter assignments such as marking fields private or similar. So in the situation, um, in a context of mass assignment, let's say that a user object when 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 you're creating an account on a website with multiple user accounts, let's say that you have your name. Let me actually switch the color here. So let's say that you have your name. You need to submit your name, your email, and I don't know, your phone number. Okay, this is what you submit when you register. However, the application also adds to your object, for example, role.user. So your object, your user object, alongside these that you can control via the browser, you also have assigned to you the role user and maybe other attributes. Now, a mass assignment attack would be the one in which you also submit the role in your initial request. So you intercept your user registration request and you temper it by adding another parameter or another attribute, role as admin. And this is a serious issue. I see this a lot in in uh, penetration tests, in the penetration tests that I conduct, it's quite difficult to protect against when you're dealing with an application that has a lot of functions and a lot of user permissions. So do keep that in mind as an attacker, but also as someone who's actually building applications for that specific matter. 513. Verify that all input, nice round circle, close to, verify that all input HTML, form fields, REST requests, URL parameters, HTTP headers, cookies, batch files, RSS feeds. So verify that all input, these on others, all input is validated using positive validation. Allow lists, as I said, or white lists. Verify that structured data is strongly typed and validated against a defined schema, including allowed characters, length, and pattern. Credit card numbers, email addresses. So you have a defined schema, for example. That schema could be defined via a regex in this situation. So we're talking, let's say we're talking about credit card numbers. Now, that's what I said in the beginning of the video. You need to 
actually know the exact purpose of the input. So if the input is an email address, you should have a strictly defined regex for email addresses, such as that it doesn't allow stuff like, for example, it doesn't allow input. So if you're a penetration test or a cybersecurity professional, this would be interesting to you. For example, dan at email.com and alongside that you would do a comma attacker at email.com and submit this as an array for example if you catch the request if you intercept the request you would be able to submit there are situations when you're able to submit this as an array and you get account takeover, which is a serious issue. It's more complicated than that, but in theory and in practice, in practice, that's how it goes. So email addresses, telephone numbers, each of them should be established by a defined schema or validating that the two related fields are reasonable such as checking that suburb and zip code match 515 verify that url redirects and forwards only allow destinations which appear on an allow list or show a warning when redirecting to potential untrusted to potentially untrusted content really important all of these as you may see apply to all levels of verification l1 l2 and l3 and in the next video we're going to go into sanitization and sandboxing verification number 5.2